Hello and welcome back to my craft room. Well, today is week 12 of One Badass Art Journal. Um, so this is an online art journaling course, which I was very lucky enough to win a free spot on. I've been thoroughly enjoying it. I've got a few to catch up on because I've been just so busy, but I've enjoyed every single class and every teacher is so different. And, you know, you just learn so much every single time. This week, the teacher is Seth Apton. I've never had a class with him before, but I love his work. I love the way he layers up and creates textures and things. I love the backgrounds that he creates. He used a few different techniques, quite a few supplies lined up here. I don't know if I'll use them all. And we're going to be using the um, jelly plate. And I haven't had my jelly plate out for ages, so I'm very excited about that. Seth ended up with a, the most gorgeous background and a, a, a word. He just made a word, a huge word, um, st stance word, the focal point. Um, of his piece um, and he just did one relatively small I don't know what size he was working in um, just put one, one page I want to carry on doing sort of double page spreads in my concertina sketchbook so I'm going to change it a little bit I'm going to do the same kind of background techniques and things and use a, a word or two like that in the same way that he's done it but I'm going to use it as a background for a kind of follow-up to the last thing you might have seen me do in my art journal uh, where I use my old doll, my old childhood doll Ham, whose head you can see in the background there. Um, I'm going to kind of use the same, in a way, the same same colour palette and uh, sort of continue the story because I still have two more of the pieces, printed um, photos that I took last week so this was from a lesson with Kat Hamilton and it was Kat whose um, giveaway I entered and, and won the and won the free spot so I'm going to kind of carry on I, there's a there's another thing I want to do with those faces so I'm going to end up using what I do today I think as the background for that so I'm just going to do a speed a speed through process more or less I might pop back and tell you what I'm up to at various points or, or put little text boxes up or whatever but mostly I'll just play some music. I did at least download some new pieces of music from the YouTube library so uh, so here's my um, concertina art journal I've been working in. This is what I've been doing so far in the... that was... I did a different class and, it, in it, and I, I messed it up and I lost my rag <laughs> with it and ended up painting over it. So this will be a background for another piece which I've got in mind. This one still needs its words. This one I've got an idea so I've scribbled it down there. So that's what I'm keeping that page for. So here's the one, this is the one I did with this face of my of my childhood doll. That was a photo of her face that I started on. That was covered with layers and layers of paint and things now, but you can see you can see who she was. So I'm continuing that story in a way over the page. And this is a concertina sketchbook so it kind of does go on and um I don't know at the moment I've I've kind of treated these as separate double page spreads and not really linked them together. So but I'm not gonna worry about that. I'm just gonna enjoy it for the as I go along but so um I haven't got a lot of room to work here. Right. Okay, I think I'm ready. I should be using gesso in a minute, but I just haven't got room for gesso as well, so I'm just going to use this cheap um, white acrylic paint. I think it'll do more or less the same thing. I'm ready. I'm going to go into music now. Um, so Seth starts with a, with a dye spray. I've got a box full of sprays. I'm not sure if this is dye spray or not. The idea is that it will leach up into the next layer I put on which is supposed to be gesso but I'm using white paint so I'm already going off piste but I'm kind of following <laughs> and this one that even works I haven't had this out for so long so let's go I'll see you in a while I should um, 
You just mentioned that one of the things that um, one of the challenges that Seth is encouraging us to take up is to just keep building the, the layers and not be afraid of letting go of the bits that you like by adding another layer. Um, he talks about whether you're a less is more or more is more person and he's usually a more is more but he's trying to rein it in a little bit that's his challenge and just I, I'm, just, I'm not going to worry about making myself do less if I want to do more or do more if I want to do less um but I think one thing I do find difficult is letting go of bits that I that I love by putting another layer over so that that's kind of my my challenge here and just enjoy that whole process and trust that it will come back and I you know even though some of the parts of some of the layers will get lost, they'll just all contribute to the whole at the end. At the moment, because I haven't got um, a dye spray that's working, <laughs> it's not doing it's not doing what it did for Seth. So I sort of faked it up a little bit by adding some colour in from the paints. I'm using some of these uh, lovely uh, acrylic paints that I got in that parcel from Zoe the other day, and it's kind of this is kind of more of a pastel kind of a version if you like in a way a lighter kind of version of the colour scheme that I was using in this one and then I've got some more vibrant and more transparent acrylic paints for later layers as well so I need for this to dry now before I can move on and I'm going to start with my jelly print in now so it's been so long since I've done this and I've never used jelly printing in quite the way I'm going to do now either which is going to be tricky because this book is big the book that Seth's using is quite small and he can press it down to pick up a, a jelly print I think I might have to do it the other way and put the jelly print down on the page <laughs> now what I might do is leave it on its on its backing I could pick up and use it like a big stamp I might have to do that The next step was to start adding some texture, so some kind of um, detail really, with what Seth used was vintage wallpaper. He used the embossed kind of vintage wallpaper, painted on it and then pressed it on to get an impression. Then he went in with stamps. Um, so I didn't have any embossed wallpaper, but I have got these old embossing folders I haven't had out for ages. So I've run a bit of card through both of those. I love this one. I love the fact that this would tie in really well with that previous piece as well. And that the cracks in the, you know, it all, it all sort of ties in and I might carry some of the cracks into one of the heads being broken and things. So. I'm going to have a go with these in a minute. I want this now to completely dry though before I do anything else. It's a bit annoying that this paper is breaking up and cracking and peeling away but maybe that will end up being a little bit of a Bertie bonus and at least because it's like two layers stuck together I know it's not going to come through. There's actually 
three la three layers of paper between this and that. So um, yes, yeah, so I'm going to put this to one side to dry, and then I'll be back to go in with more my detail. I, I like that you know there's little bits of all the layers coming through, and I'm just a bit I'm a bit frustrated that I can't. Really, it doesn't really show up very well on the camera. I'm going to at some point I think try warming the whole thing up a bit with a little glaze of this quinacridone de glazo gold because I love doing that um, but we'll see and I think I will probably want to gesso at least a couple of areas in the middle to then put my transparent photo on but I'm most happy with so far is this one which is almost a waste one but I love that I love how that's come out I'll tell you what I reckon jelly printing works best on cheap old copy paper like this or, or really thin deli paper comes up better on that than anything else. Right, let's see how we do with this. Right, I'm going to go quiet again now and um, I'll see you in a bit. Okay, I think I'm done with my background now. It's a slightly warmer tone, a slightly more vibrant than you see there. It is a little bit flat on the camera, but um, yeah, but I'm quite I'm quite happy with it. I'm gonna try. So this is the point where Seth was was working on a, on a single page, and then he he put a work he used the piece that he printed. He he did a, pulled a print on the black card he used actually, but I couldn't find any quickly. So I tried it on this buff card and then I pulled this other one from here. So I might use that if I decide I want to stamp my word out separately. I might just use that because I just think that looks, I love the look of that. It's just different enough from the background to stand out, but um, but it's still got the same colours as, as I'm in the background. So it'll look similar. I could still do some smaller little detailed stamping around the edge or I might just get a, like a sponge applicator and just do a bit of you know black around the edge here and there like that because probably most of these I'm going to want to go back and blacken in the edges afterwards just because I, I like the look of that it's just yeah you know, um and it's sort of all, with all the different styles you end up doing when you're following a course like this it's sort of bring them all together a little bit Keep this handy in case I want to go around the edges. So now I'm going to have a bit of a play with my last couple of faces that I've got and decide whether I need to put a bit more lighter colour paint behind or whether just keep the face patchy like that, which I quite like as well. Right, I've um, cut out the um, printed images made them look sort of more broken than, <laughs> than they already were and uh, pasted them down. So uh, because it was an inkjet printer, I had to be careful, I didn't want to smudge the ink. So I put a layer of the of the uh, matte medium down first, carefully dropped these on and then just brushed over the top. If I'd done it the other way, as soon as I did the brushing, it probably would have smeared the ink, but that seems to have worked fine. And I quite like the way that um, the background is, I don't know how well the camera will pick that up, but the background is showing through the faces. I think it'll help to give that kind of broken doll look. And I think I'm gonna just keep it really simple now. I'm just gonna use these, I've got these matte graphite, um, pit matte graphite pencils by Faber-Castell. Um, Zoe sent me some of these, she, she wasn't, wasn't so keen on them. Um, so I had a, I had the 14B one, I'd gone out and found another 14B one after we got these in a scrawler box and I fell in love with them. <laughs> 
and um, and now I've got some other ones to try like this 2B that I haven't before uh, from from the box that Zoe sent so so that's brilliant I love these because it's I love using graphite but of course there's always that shine and especially if you're trying to film or take pictures of it that's really difficult and as soon as it catches the light it doesn't look dark anymore it looks light so yeah but with these you don't get that at least you get that very little so I think I'm going to keep it simple and just go with them and then I'm going to use that piece that that you know where I pulled the leftover paint off with just this cheap copy paper and I just I love how that came out I'm gonna do the thing that Seth shows where you you tear it but you tear it against the ruler so you get a torn edge kind of a deckle edge but but a very controlled line to just tear some pieces of paper and I wrote down some when I came in the next morning and looked at this I just scribbled down all the words that came to mind when I was working through this and the previous one um, so there's things like fractured, fragmented, missing parts, incomplete, lost, broken, separate, hidden, damaged, disconnected. Um, and I'm just going to write some of those words or, or I will possibly stamp them onto pieces of this paper and have them dotted around. Um, I've got some archival link and this lovely stamp set that Tom got me with letters and numbers. So I will probably use those. So I'm going to go quiet now for the last leg of this journey <laughs> and, uh, and I'll see you at the end. Okay, I think I'm done with that for now. I've stuck some of my little words around here. I've done a bit of a black kind of inking around the edge. I kind of feel like I maybe want to go in and, and deepen the colours kind of around the figures to make them come out more. Um, I also didn't get around to using any of this uh, quinacridone Nicolazo gold, which is like, a, like really transparent. You can do a lovely kind of golden transparent kind of wash with it. It's a really pretty effect. Um, so I'm half thinking about that but part of the challenge for this I've ended up mashing up Seth Apter's class and um, Kat Hamilton's class together so Seth Apter's is kind of where the background and the words have come from but the focal point is more the previous week's class with Kat Hamilton um, but for this week we was part of the challenge was to kind of if you're a more is more person try and rein it in a bit and vice versa <laughs> if you normally have problems with layering up and losing previous layers and uh, you know keep make yourself keep going to see what happens uh, find the magic as, as he put it so um i'm going to make myself stop there and walk away but i will probably come back to this because at the moment my instinct is to want to start going into this more that's what i would usually do so i'm going to stop 
but it may be that when you see this again the next time will be when I do a flip through of the whole sketchbook when it's finished um, that this will have changed a bit so we'll see uh, thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you again really soon.